So good morning, and uh, I'll speak with this portable microphone. Uh, my name is Eitan Kerem, and I'm the chairman of uh, pediatrics at the Adassa uh, University Hospitals. And I'm going to talk on the non-radiation adverse effect of exposure to screens. Uh, I got into this field just out of curiosity, seeing that this uh, uh, becomes more and more prevalent among children, and I started to review the current uh, scientific literature to see what is written about these adverse events or, uh, or effect, either positive or negative effect of exposure to screens, and I found uh, hundreds of uh, reports of scientific uh, works that uh, document, uh, evaluated in a scientific manner uh, what is the effect of this uh, uh, technology in our children. So uh, we are now in a, a, a time of, uh, of a revolution. It's the digital, electronic, virtual revolution. The mankind, humanity, is under revolution. And like during the Industrial Revolution, children paid very, very heavy price during this time of revolution. They, many of them lost their homes. Many of them were used for cheap or free labor. Many of them uh, found themselves uh, used and abused. And it took, took many decades to uh, our society in order to find ways, rules, laws in order to protect the children from uh, uh, the uh, time that our uh, culture passed through the industrial time. We are now in a similar situation where children pay heavy price of this uh, uh, revolution that we are going through and I would like to review. So it took us time uh, uh, to find out, and it takes time to uh, evaluate and study the adverse events. So what I will present today are not all the adverse <coughs> health outcomes of this uh, uh, change, uh, but at least some that are very uh, 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 solid data about it. So children are exposed many, many hours a day. This is a, a report 10 years ago. It's outdated. The numbers are similar. The uh, variation of exposure to the different me media is a little bit different. But uh, what we can talk about is we can talk about screen time. So there are two types of uh, uh, media. There is what we call passive media, like TV, uh, video screens, and there is the interactive digital media. Uh, both are, uh, uh, have the, uh, uh, well, we know more about the passive media because it's more uh, uh, existent, uh, and only recently data emerge on the effect of the digital media. So the exposure starts very early. We can see here uh, uh, different ages, less than one year, one year, two, three, and four. And uh, by the age of four years, uh, almost all children are exposed to TV. 81% uh, are exposed to play games and uh, uh, half of them are exposed to laptops and uh, portable media. Where is Israel? Uh, this study compared the amount of hours children spend in front of screens. This is four, more than four hours, and this is less than two hours. And Israel is in a very non-respectful place. We are third in the OECD countries in the time children spend in front of screens. 
what is uh, uh, important in exposure to screens is in many houses, TV is open all the time. And here we can see these American data, but in Israel it's similar. At 50% of the houses, TV is just open. And there is just direct relationship between the, uh, uh, having a TV open all the time and the amount of exposure to screens of their children. Uh, children uh, have TVs in the room. Uh, this again is an old data, 10 years old. So here 55% of teenagers have TV in their rooms. Now uh, it's almost 80%. However, preschoolers, about 25% uh, of them have already TV in their rooms. And also there is screen time in the car. Parents today do not spend time with the children while driving. They do not sing songs, play games. They just put them in front of the screen and they can be quiet and uh, uh, think about uh, work or what they are going to do tomorrow. Uh, when they ask children, with whom do you watch TV? Some will all watch with friends, uh, are not only TV but screens, some with parents, but most of them are alone. And this is a very crucial issue, that children are in front of the screens alone. And uh, especially teenager, teenagers, two-thirds of them are exposed to it after midnight, usually during the time that parents sleep. And they are, again, they are alone. Now, this starts very early. And we can see here in this study, uh, this is 20 months years old. So some of the children start already after birth to be exposed to screens. And by the age of 24 months or two years, almost 60% or 80% are already exposed to screens. And is this beneficial to the children? Many parents think this is the way that my child will develop faster and better. And this is wrongly. Uh, uh, here, the uh, uh, child ownership of media platform at the age of four, 48% uh, TV, 64% already have mobile media, either laptops or cell phones. So they start to be exposed very early. That's for age one? That's age four, okay? Less than one, one, two, and it is increasing with age. And you can see uh, 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 this is less than one, like infants few months old. And then uh, uh, it's here, uh, the, about 10% are already, before they are one year old, exposed to portable media. And uh, I'm not going into it, but studies showed that they do not have the coordination in order to use the portable media. But I will also talk about what they understand from what they see. And here uh, we see that those who are four years old, I don't want to go over all the data, but those who are four years old already started exposure under the age of one year. And uh, uh, there is direct relationship between the level of education of the mother and exposure to media at young age. And uh, uh, these are uh, mothers with over 16 years of education, and here are mothers of less than 12 years of education, and they see the difference in the amount of hours children spent in front of screens with, uh, uh, that is going more in the low socioeconomic level of our society. Uh, uh, this is another interesting study, the uh, Oregon Pregnancy Risk Assessment uh, uh, Survey, uh, uh, assessing almost 2,000 uh, parents and uh, they focused here in children that are exposed more than two hours uh, per day for screen at the age of two years, okay? More than two hours per day to screens. So uh, uh, there are 20% in this study of the children. So it's about 300 or 350 children that are exposed 
at the age of two years, more than two hours every day. And it is associated with having TV in the bedroom and uh, uh, less time or less rate of reading books to the children. It becomes as a, a, a replacement of the parent. It is associated with maternal depression. But interestingly, those children that are going to daycare, they are less exposed to the screens. So again, it emphasizes that ch parents, especially the low socioeconomic levels in our society, use the screens as uh, uh, to occupy the child instead of the parents or as a cheap babysitter. Children start eating in front of screens, so the parents give them food, they eat, and they look at the screen. However, they ignore the fact that they are eating. They are more focused on the screen, and this again creates eating disorders. Uh, many children think that exposure to screens at the age, under the age of two years in infants will uh, uh, encourage or increase or uh, fasten their development. What studies show? Well, first, we know that the first months of life are the most important time of development. This is the time that the newborn brain is developing rapidly. It is also uh, characterized by plasticity. It can be changed, and this is the most crucial time. We talk that the environment that the child develops is composed of immediate environment. It goes by circles. Uh, there are different ways to def uh, define these circles. Uh, uh, microsystem, exosystem. However, today the screens become the major factor that is responsible on the development of our children. And we are talking about the technosystem, which are the portable, the computers, internet, and we ask ourselves, do we want the, uh, uh, the content that the children are exposed to in the TV or the screens or the uh, uh, portable uh, uh, appliances uh, to be responsible on the development of our children? What do children or infants under two years of age see in the screen? They see a mixture of colors, figures, noise. Each scene is very short. Lots of funny violence, okay? Funny violence for us. Look about this picture. Look about this picture. It's funny for us, but it is not always funny for the children. And there is never a consequence for the violence. Because if he will catch the bird, the bird will not die. The well, bird will come up and continue to run. And if he will catch the mouse, Okay, the mice will come back. So there is no consequence to the violence. And infants have a false perception of reality. They do not understand virtual reality and believe it is real. They believe that the virtual figures are alive. And there is confusion between evilness and goodness. And they uh, acquire what they see, and this is in the early stages of their, of their development. Children are exposed very early. Again, this study, two years old, children more than 60 minutes every day, more than 120 minutes every day, is this increasing their development? So this aim of this study, published uh, uh, several years ago, and what they found there is a negative correlation between length of exposure to screens and development of language or uh, 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 other uh, uh, characteristic cognition of uh, development. And children that are education, uh, are exposed more than 60 minutes to the media have lower developmental scores compared to those who are not exposed to the media. And there is no difference between exposure to educational or non-educational content. What about school performance? Well, are they going to be better students if they spend more time uh, in front of the screens? 
Okay, uh, uh, this is television weekday screen time. These are the excellent students, and you see there are much more those who are not exposed to TV. And as the time spent in front of TV increases, the number of excellent students decreases, and the low, uh, 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 below average is increasing. And here, most of the children are in average. And uh, 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 are we going to raise average children, or we want to them to be uh, uh, have higher grades? Then TV is the opposite way to uh, uh, raise them. Uh, again, uh, media use and grades, and here light media users, me moderate and heavy. And as you, uh, uh, the uh, rate of using media is increasing, the, uh, those with good grades is decreasing, and those who fail or who have poor grades is increasing. So there is, again, negative relationship between time spending in front of uh, media and uh, 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 school performance. This study measured uh, uh, having TV at your room in adolescent or not. Not having, having. And we can see uh, less grades in mathematics, reading, language arts. Uh, uh, so I think this point is quite clear. The more time in front of TV, the less school performance. We also know now that uh, our screens, and not necessarily TV, are associated with sleep disturbances and insufficient sleep. There are many, many studies. I will just show some of them. Uh, uh, TV viewing, low and high, and sleep uh, uh, problems surveys. And again, uh, passive exposure is even increasing the sleep dis disorders. Uh, um, here, uh, it's a sleep problem survey showing that uh, those who are exposed have much higher rate of sleep disorders. Uh, um, this is the number of weekly viewed adult programs. And uh, uh, the sleep disorders are mainly time until the child falls asleep. Uh, this is part of sleep quality. Uh, we know that those who fall immediately to sleep have much higher quality sleep, uh, and it takes them sometimes uh, an hour to fall asleep after they were exposed to content in the screens. It's either, either uh, uh, interactive content, uh, cell phones, or uh, just sh uh, seeing a, a movie. Attention deficit disorder. Uh, this is an interesting study from Japan. They did functional MRIs uh, uh, on children while they were watching a uh, screen. And what was uh, lightened uh, is the occipital lobe. Obviously, occipital lobe is the visual center, but not only the occipital lobe, also the frontal lobe. Frontal lobe is uh, 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 in charge or uh, uh, associated with personality, and temporal lobes are associated with affection. So uh, just being exposed is doing something in our brain. Um, this study uh, measured time exposed to screen at the age of three, and then they did ADHD tests at the age of eight. And those children were exposed to viol uh, violent entertainment, those to nonviolent entertainment, and those to educational entertainment. And uh, every hour of watching the violent uh, content was associated with four time risk of ADHD, and uh, exposure to nonviolent was associated with three times more rate of ADHD. Another study exposure of children at the age of one uh, and a half years old. No adverse on ADHD. Okay, that, I mean, that's actually important. So it can have a positive role, it's just the content is relevant. Absolutely. And we are talking now at the age of three. So right. below the age of two, no exposure, period. And when people ask me, parents ask me, I tell them uh, a 
exposure is toxic. Okay, we need to use the name toxic because it's really toxic to the child brain. And they should avoid the child of being exposed to the screen. After that, there are educational programs like DORA, other, which are characterized by the fact that the scenes are longer, it's slower. Those of you who are watching those programs, they are slower, they are not like the cartoons that... And uh, uh, they talk to the children. They don't... Uh, 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 the cartoons, the children are just watching. Here they talk, they teach, they are more educational. And in this study, at least in this study, they are less associated with uh, ADHD. However, if a child just watches a movie, that's a completely different issue, and it is associated with increased rate of ADHD. Uh, this is again another study, and uh, uh, they studied exposure of children at the age of one and a half year old and three and a half year old at the age of seven, and we can see that every hour of watching was associated with 10% increase in the rate of ADHD. And there are more and more studies. I don't have the time to show them all, but there is certainly direct relationship between time, early exposure to non-educational content and increasing rate of attention deficit disorder. Aggression and violence. This is a very important issue. Children watch violent uh, episodes very early in their life. And watching violent content leads to violent behavior. And this is a very a classic study done by Professor Bandura, I think 30 or 40 years ago, uh, uh, developing the concept of social learning. So what he did, he did a very interesting study. He uh, took uh, children at the age of four. Some of them were exposed to violent content. What they saw, there was a room with toys, and there was a ball, a doll. They called it Bobo doll. And they saw a movie where an adult comes to the room and starts hitting the doll uh, and using uh, or behaving aggressively to this doll. The other half were not. So that's what they saw. Uh, uh, those, the group that was watching this movie of the adult hitting the doll, all entered the room and immediately started hitting and behaving aggressively to the doll. The other half that was, did not watch this movie, they entered the room and they just played with the toys that were in the room. So children adapt what they see. And uh, uh, a group of students analyzed uh, for over three years the content of TV programs, and there are about 10,000 violent episodes during these uh, uh, programs. Uh, uh, usually about 60% of the programs already have violent episodes, and in most of them uh, uh, it is either uh, um, real life, the, the bad guy or the bad uh, behavior uh, go unpunished in most of the cases, and uh, there is no resume or uh, uh, a penalty to violence. There is, there is no price to violence. We all are exposed to violent episodes in movies. We see people dying in movies. We never see their children, their orphans. We never see the mothers. We never see the wives. We just see someone dying in a movie. And there is no price for violence. For children, when they see these episodes, they acquire and they uh, uh, grow with indifference to, uh, uh, to violence. Uh, this is a very interesting study. Uh, uh, children at the age of 70 years, exposure to uh, hours in TV, more than three hours, less than one hour, and at the age of 31, whether they had uh, uh, violent 
uh, uh, behavior or aggressive behavior. So those who were exposed less than one hour did not develop aggressive behavior at the age of 31. And those who were uh, more than three hours exposed, uh, many of them, mainly the males, developed aggressive behavior later. Uh, uh, this is another study, again, showing uh, heavy exposure is associated with aggressive behavior. Uh, this is another study from New Zealand uh, showing uh, conviction uh, is much higher in low socioeconomic uh, uh, societies when the children were exposed uh, longer to TV and antisocial behavior again. So uh, uh, the bottom line is that the media is not the cause of violence in our society. However, using violence as a mean to solve conflicts is acquired by the media as it is acquired from parents and the environment. So we always say that the children that were born in violent homes will be violent children, but now it's not only them, other children that are exposed to violence will also acquire it. What about social and emotional difficulties? Uh, uh, there are two aspects to this. One is the uh, exposure to the media the children develop as more, the more they are exposed, they feel more lonely and they are less happy. Uh, um, this study is also a very interesting study. Uh, when are you using mobile uh, um, uh, media? So parents that use uh, mobile media to calm down when the child is upset or for peace and quiet in the house, these children are less happy and are, they feel more uh, 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 emotionally deprived compared to parents that they are, uh, uh, that have rules at home. This is a study uh, uh, sh showing that depression was associated with time spent on mobile phone and TV. And on the other hand, having rules in the home, and uh, uh, Deborah you talked about it before, uh, uh, having the rules at home about television viewing, video game playing is associated with lower levels of depression because children expect from their parents to provide them with rules. And if the parents do not provide them with rules, the parents lose their parental role and the child feels lost in our world. Overweight and obesity, I'm not going to talk about it. Every hour the child is in front of the screen is an hour the child is not active. Uh, so I'll end with uh, digital and social media. And there are now clear studies showing that children that are exposed many hours in front of the social and digital media have higher rate of smoking, drug abuse, childhood obesity, alcohol abuse, driving accidents, teen pregnancy, uh, internet safety issues, and these are what our parents are concerned of. And these are the outcome of ex heavy exposure to the social and digital media. Uh, studies showed that the, the rate of advertisement of alcohol products uh, in the social media of uh, teenagers is much higher than in the social media of adults. Uh, uh, many, uh, and there is no control of the uh, uh, advertisement in the internet. Uh, and uh, uh, we are controlling advertisement of smoking in the uh, passive media, on TV and newspapers, but not in the internet. And uh, uh, what is the source of sh sexual information of teenagers? Uh, school, 40%. TV, movies, magazine, 40%. And parents, much less. So, uh, uh, and this is non-controlled, non-educational content. Exposure to pornography. Males and females, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, these are males, these are females. And the uh, dotted line is uh, unwanted exposure. So males, uh, 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 you can see that there is high rate 
of unwanted exposure, but mainly females. They do not search for pornography in the uh, internet, but they are exposed, exposed to it unwanted. And I'm not going to talk about uh, pedophilic uh, content, unsafety in the internet, uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, pictures, uh, bullying. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't have the time, but this is a very dangerous uh, um, place for the children. So what can we do? There is a lot of what we can do. And many times parents ask me, so what we can do? And I ask them, you are a parent. This is your role. It's not the role of the school. It's not of the role of the uh, uh, um, uh, police. It's your role to keep your child safe. However, most of the parents are not aware to these data. They are not aware. And when I give this lecture to parents, they say, oh, I feel now so guilt because I exposed my child. Uh, I was asked in one of the morning TV shows to talk about it. So they brought also a child psychiatrist next to me to calm the parents because they say you're going to frighten them and now they feel guilty of what they caught so far. But uh, we need to uh, uh, give them the data, show them what's happening, and these are the intelligent pa uh, parents and uh, the uh, lower society levels are less exposed to it and we need to do campaigns and I believe that the campaign should start in Tipat Chalav. So there are studies showing that uh, 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 we need to start in early childhood and the parental uh, uh, rules can reduce exposure to media. Uh, this study uh, uh, did uh, in a school uh, media diet, and we call it media diet, and children in the intervention group were described as having less violent behavior and less uh, coarse language use. Uh, uh, this is another study sh doing media diet, randomized trial, and the uh, uh, end result that the children had much better grades, and these are the, the lighter colors are the lower socioeconomic uh, uh, societies. So the intervention is even much more effective in our low social uh, or in our social periphery of, uh, of our country. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention.